What's happening, family? Social Proof family. We are live. This is one that you really, really want to share with other people. Uh, It's going to be an incredible conversation because there is a dynamic between happiness, the pursuit of happiness. We got to define happiness, but it's happiness in our personal life, happiness in our life as it relates to other people, happiness in business. And there's a lot of there's a lot of like conversation around happiness, man, because some people are happy when they're trying to be what other people define as happy. And you realize, man, this don't make me happy. So uh, we are going to have a conversation today. Um, we got Nella's mic ready. Nella's mic good. How you I'm doing? I'm ready. I'm chilling. I'm good. How are you? I am incredible. Are you happy? I am happy. Like what percentage happy? Like on a scale of like one to a hundred percent, or like one to like, ten. Well, let's go, yeah, one up to a hundred percent. All right, on a one hundred percent, I say I'm like eighty-eight. You're eighty-eight percent happy, mm-hmm. which means in the moment minute, moments of when you're not happy, mm-hmm. it only accounts for twelve percent. Correct. But when you're not feeling happy, doesn't that um, it feels like you're like one hundred percent not happy though? Yeah. Yeah. And I know for me, like sometimes my mind is like the worst place for me to be in, especially when I'm not happy. So um, like you'll you'll hear some people like a lot of my mentors have said, like sometimes the worst jail you can be in is in your mind. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm one of those people. So that's why I surround my myself with people like you and like on the morning meetup and things of that nature. So in those moments, I'm easily able to pull myself out of it and get right back into gear. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Okay. So, but today, today, happy. I'm I'm happy today. 88%. 88%, even with the rain. The percentage ch- is changes day to day though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. We are going to have a conversation. Didi, we have uh, Didi, um, who I met. Um, I joined a an incredible program with Mr. Myron Golden, and then I met his daughter, Didi, and I realized... His daughter is way doper than him. You know what I mean? Myron's an amazing person, but the Dee Dee. You know what I mean? First name, the. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am absolutely incredible. Are you happy? I am happy. What percent? Today? Today. Today, I'd say I'm probably like a 92. 92? Yeah. Why so happy? I think this is fun. And it's like out of my comfort zone a little bit, but I'm still having fun. So yeah, 92. Good. Describe like a, a 30% day. Or do you have 30%? I wouldn't say I have 30%. Ever? No. Moments of 30%. I have moments of 30%. Yeah. It'll be like late at night and I'm like, crap, I should have went to the gym today. And I didn't eat good. <laughs> I'm never going to lose this weight. <laughs> That'll be like be at 30%. And then I'm like, well, there's always Monday. And then I'm back. <laughs> So that will throw you in a tailspin of unhappiness. Or or worse yet, I'll go in my closet to like get ready to come to an event and I'll be like, this is what I get. Nothing fits. That'll mm. be like a 30% moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That? <laughs> that's a 30%. That's moment. when you just throw on a jumpsuit and yeah. call it a day. <laughs> Incredible. All right, man, we are going to jump into this conversation. I am, uh, I'm happy, pretty happy today. Um, praying that the happiness lasts all day, um, but you know, in a in a happy day, um, there are like monkey wrenches that you can't control, right? Or you know, something might trigger you. But we're gonna have a really really good conversation around this. Somebody throw it in the chat real quick. Um, what is your percentage of happiness today? Are you in complete bliss, one hundred percent happy, best day? of my life or are we kind of lower on the happiness meaning like some thing you came on this call because you you needed some inspiration you needed some motivation you needed to be around some people or hear some people who are a little happier than you and you could borrow from their happiness just for a moment um just throw your percentage in the chat i'd be interested in hearing that but before we get started uh we've we've got the musical stylings of J Star, <laughs> J Star, what up, man? You happy today? What up, bro? What up, bro? Yeah, I'm happy, man. Like, I woke up happy? this morning. 
I'm amazing. Every day I wake mm. up is a blessing. What's your percentage? I'm probably like a probably like a 89, man. 89? Yeah, I feel it's I feel good day. I feel good. I didn't go to the gym today, so that's that's I feel God good. Yes, sir. Like, what are you percent of doing to you? <laughs> Look, and then you come in here and it's nothing but snacks here. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> he got like one healthy snack. And that guy, and that guy carried it. It was good. <laughs> I feel good though, man. All right. Well, look, man. Um, please uh, share with the people. This give give. It, hold on. First off, what you about to play? Is it going to make people happy? Get the people what they want. Come on. You know. You know the comments be going crazy. Let's get to you it. Know? Let's get you to know? it. You know, man. Let's go. Let's get our intro popping. Let's pop it. Look, I ain't got time for this small talk Your big plans coming up short I call it how I see it, don't get mad at me In a room full of winners is where I'd rather be Every new level you reach come with jealousy You gotta watch the way your movie call a strategy Official with the game, curry with the three If you need some social proof, you know we got receipts but don't you never let them doubters win Watch your back, your biggest foes can be your closest friends They say the enemy is just your enemy Quit trying to do life by yourself, you need community Ain't somebody with wealth that did it by themselves Why you stressing about them people who deny your health And keep on making moves with no apologies But if they want smoke, we get that for free We get that for free Right, man. J Star, what up, man? I like that. Do me a favor, Kenny. Can you turn that to uh, J Star real quick? Let's turn the audio down a little bit. No, 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 turn that camera. And just put him in the center real quick. J Star. Yo. <laughs> How we doing, man? What's happening, world? He was recording another intro. Right before the show. Right before the show. Okay, we'll hear it next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. How's, how's, how's your work ethic been around the music? Man, listen, you got me on fire, man. You've been challenging me. Mm-hmm. Um, we supposed to have it last week. I had text David before, like, "Hey, it's written." Oh, yeah. No <laughs> doubt, absolutely. <laughs> Watch out. So we we working, man. I'm um I'm excited. I think like I was I was trying to say the other day, the proposal day, when you were like, "Yo, what you waiting for?" Like writing an intro or writing music to the same beat. You kind of like right now as I'm writing a new intro, I'm still list. I still hear the old intro mm-hmm. as I'm trying. So that's the only thing where I'm like battling trying to change up the flow the cadence and all that but you can ask kenny you know we almost done that you know what i mean so yeah like we'll it. be ready i like it well how many verses did we write this week mm, we only got the one we got the one but the goal is once it's done this this is my goal the goal is to have at least two every time i go to the session right but the way that i write i don't write on paper everything's in my head okay so it's it's more of of getting it down like once it's recorded then i can really focus in on the other one so the way i record is like i write it i'm 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 saying it over and over until until it's recorded then i can focus on the next one but okay the goal right, but I'm, I'm not really focused on the intro itself but the question is how many verses you're an artist are we talking about music period you're an artist oh, I right? got, yeah yeah i got music how many verses did you write this week let's i'm gonna say three you got three verses this yeah, week? Yeah, for this, no, one. No, just pe- no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 three, three. At least at least, at least, three, yeah. Three this week? Yeah, at least three. Okay. All right. At least let's, three. Let's keep working. I got, listen, the goal All was right, to... Listen, ain't going to be no more weeks where you only, I ain't do nothing, and it's taking me oh, forever. That, that's different. When when we talk right. about that, I'm thinking you're talking about just the intro only. Oh, if we talk about my my music, then yeah, I got, I got that. Three verses? Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah, I, yeah, I try, to get, I try to do more than that. Okay. Right, I mean, you cool. can ask the fiance right here. The, the, the instrumentals is all day throughout Do the whole. You put it out on social. I haven't put it out on social. Okay, let's start so. putting it out on social. All right, say less. Because you could tell me that you wrote three. And could just be saying that. Kind of don't believe you, but I don't have a, I don't have a reason <laughs> to not believe you. But I can't verify it. Yeah. So let's get the people what they want on a regular basis. Say less. You got let's that. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's get this conversation going, y'all. Um, I think. Turn me up in the headphones. I don't have no headphones, but I heard rappers say that. 
I'm talking about not not my voice, but the music. So I can hear. Okay, so we're having <laughs> we are having a conversation. Turn my voice down a little bit. The speaker down a little. Bit. I don't know how we did that. Okay. All right. Um, life and business success. I think if we are going to be happy, we need to identify what happiness looks like for us. I think we're just looking to be happy and we're looking for a feeling, but we haven't even really decided what it means to be happy or defined it or like really started to associate, I'm happiest when this happens, so let me keep doing that thing. Let me keep chasing that because we haven't identified what happiness is. So I looked up, I did the, I did your job for you, okay? I looked up happiness, the definition, and the definition of happiness is the state of being happy. It's the state of being happy, the definition of happiness. So it's a, a place where happy is occurring. But obviously we have to look up the definition of happy, and happy is the feeling or showing pleasure or contentment, which could contradict most messages of entrepreneurship because if the definition has something to do with contentment and we're telling you, go, 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 grind, grind, grind. You make six figures a year, but you need to make seven. You make seven figures a year. You need to make eight. You make eight figures a year. You have to be a billionaire. But when can you be content? I think it's an important conversation to have. What would you be content with? Now, I don't know this to be true. This is not a class that I'm teaching, but I'm just trying to create a conversation around happiness. It says that the definition of being happy is having a feeling or showing pleasure or contentment. Well, now I know that my goal is to be content, to be at a place in my life where I am happy for everything that I have. I don't need more. More is extra, but I don't need it. If I get more, I'll take it. Great, but that's a bonus. I don't necessarily need to go go get it. So um, I've been blessed and fortunate to build a business and being an entrepreneur where I can have some stuff. Do I want some more stuff? Yes. But if God doesn't do anything else for me, I'm good. I, I, I'm not beating myself up for um, not accomplishing an eight figure, figure year because I have three incredible children and a loving wife and I can take care of them and we can do cool stuff. I am content. I don't have to, I don't have to like, I don't have to build Apple. I don't, me, me personally, me personally. What does make me happy though is the building of something. So when I'm building, I can say now, truthfully, when I'm building something, and not everything, but some stuff I build, it's not about the money. Most of y'all, when you say that, you're lying. I'm doing this for the love. It ain't about the money. You're doing it because you think that you're going to make some money. Especially if you don't have any, right? If you don't have much, then... I mean, if you're going to be real with yourself, and I think you'll get there faster, if you admit, some people, if you admit that it's about the money. I need to get to this particular goal, but it's not the money that's going to make me happy. It's the things that I can do for my family and the lifestyle that I can live. It's a sad case for your child to ask you for something that you can't provide, not because they don't deserve it, but because you can't. I would hate for my daughter to come home and say look I got all A's dad can I have some shoes and I have to say no not because you don't deserve it I'm saying no not you deserve it but I'm saying no because I can't provide for you what you deserve that's not happiness for me so you build something and say, yo, let's, let's go after it. There's a certain dollar amount that I believe would make me happy and content. Let's just start there. Okay, there's a lot of conversation around it. We're gonna have the conversation around it, but we have to identify what will make us happy. The second definition of the word happy is having a sense of confidence in or satisfaction with a person, arrangement, or situation. Having a sense of confidence 
or satisfaction with a person, arrangement, or situation. So we'll start this conversation off with what, what do you want? What do you want? Somebody throw it in the chat real quick, man. What do you want? And if I was a scamming pastor, I'd say, <laughs> throw a super chat in the chat <laughs> that if you want somebody to bless you with a thousand <laughs> if you want a thousand you need to drop a seed of a thousand but I'm not a scammy bastard so hey listen <laughs> give it will be given unto you okay alright man <laughs> Come on, man. That joke made me happy. <laughs> so, I mean, we have to identify what we want. And in all honesty, um, giving does make me happy. So last week, it was really, really cool. We were taking a conversation in a certain direction. And then some high school kids came by from MLK High School. And when I did a, I did a presentation there and the kids were in the front row, like they play football, they're popular, right? They're, they're, they're in the front row, they are super locked in. And I'm like doing my entrepreneurial thing. I get off and they surround me, almost like they're about to jump me. But they <laughs> loved the information. It was like, yo, we really want to build some. Like I got this camera, how do I do it? I'm like, yo, y'all want to create content, come to the studio, no problem. And I give the kid my cell number. I don't know if it's legal or not, but I gave the kid my cell number and he texts me. He's like, yo, can we come by? I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not there today, whatever. They had a day off of school and last week they came by on a Friday because they were off school. And they started to decide, uh, you know, I, we had a chance to have a conversation Then I asked them, what do they need? And they say, well, we need mic microphones to increase the quality of our content. So moral of the story. We start raising money. On the live, we raised like 600. They needed like eight something. So I gave the other 200. Y'all gave the other 600. Meaning these kids got something. Me giving the 200 had nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with me and the feeling that I did something for somebody that I know if when I was a student, I would have loved someone not only to give me something, but to give me some game. So that made me happy. And there's a lot of people that gave a super chat and it made you happy. You didn't give it to me. Like I didn't go out and take my wife on an expensive dinner. We took the money that you gave along with some money that I gave and we got them something. And I'm not asking for anything in return because that's what makes me happy. So this is one of the things that I want. So every week I come on here and I'm like, yo, give a super chat, drop a super chat. We take the money and we invest in youth entrepreneurship. It makes me happy. Does it make me money? It costs me money, but it makes me happy. These are one of the things that I'm identifying that makes me happy. I'm asking you right now to identify what makes you happy for longer periods of time. What do you want? What do you want? And then I think kind of like, you gotta ask what you want and then what do you need? And sometimes there's a conflict between what you want and what you need. Because the thing that you want is what you, the thing that you need is what you need in the moment, but it's not necessarily what you want. But if you do the thing that you need to do right now and it doesn't feel good, it doesn't make you happy, you'll have what you want later that will ultimately make you happy. But some of us are chasing extreme happiness now, meaning I'm going to do whatever I want to do right now and not do what I need to do. And then you keep chasing these short windows of getting what you want, but never start feeling joy. This is a good conversation we're about to have. Does what you want and what you need conflict? We need to have this conversation. Listen, if you are looking at this on Instagram Live, please join the YouTube channel. Come over to YouTube because I want to entertain this conversation with you all. I want you all to join in. I want to hear you. I want to see you. You could pop in right on the um, right on the screen and we will all be able to see you on the YouTube. So let's get into this conversation with my special guest. But before we do that, we have Miss Nella Star. <laughs> His last name is Star. No, it's not. 
You're Nella Star. You Lord understand? Jesus, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> great afternoon, great afternoon, everybody. What is going on, all of my people on Instagram and YouTube? I hope you guys have had an amazing week. But before we go ahead and get to today, today's conversation, you guys already know I got to give you the house rules because you in Big Mama's house, all right? First and foremost, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button, whether you are on YouTube or Instagram, and make sure you share this with at least three friends. Like, I'm going to give you like two seconds right now. One, two. Okay. You, you've had your time, but keep sharing anyway. Okay. And then finally, if you are on YouTube, please make sure you go ahead and drop a super chat. As David said, do it for the kids. All right. Do it for the kids. That money is not going into our pockets. It's going to go ahead and help all the kids we're aiming for all the kids within inner all cities the that have the entrepreneurial spirit within them and they are ready to build something, but they can't do it without your help. All right. But today's conversation, we're going to go ahead and get into why we happy, like, and then the keys to it. Okay. David, go ahead and take it. Let's get to it. Okay. I want to uh, introduce my very, very special guest today. Um, first off, I met this young lady and just, brilliant when it comes to not only business but people and a relationship between people the human being business and the goal dd there's a relationship here right oh of course let's talk about it introduce yourself first and then let's get into this conversation uh, my name is Dee Dee. As Shan said, we met at a mastermind. I'm a coach and consultant, so I consult business owners on business things, but also business as it relates to the individual. Because I think a lot of times when people join masterminds, they don't consider who they are. They just consider who the coach is. They love the coach. And they do anything that coach says, regardless of whether or not it resonates with them and wonder why it works, but they're not happy or it doesn't work and they're not happy. So, um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting conversation. And the correlation between happiness and business is something that I'm real passionate about because I'm not doing anything if it doesn't make me happy. Like, I won't do it. So Nothing? Not as it relates to business. I got hard lines. But isn't, um, sometimes it's a really good idea. Mm. And you got it. I mean, it, here's the thing, though. Especially, let's talk to a beginning entrepreneur. You got to do some stuff that doesn't make you happy in the beginning for sure, right? So I think that it's like it's three things. When it when you're starting out, obviously you know that it's all about like what's going on in the marketplace, what do people want? That's where it all starts. Is this something that people want to buy? So I mm -hmm. think it's about not just profitability, will this make me money? It's not just about uh, proficiency. Can I teach this? Do I know how to do it? It's also about passion. It's about all three of those things. So if I can teach it and make money from it, but I'm not passionate about it, it won't make as much money and it won't make me happy. And I don't want to do something that's going to make me miserable just for money. Mm. Let me ask you this. There are some people who start an idea as an entrepreneur, right? Mm. And they, they do something that they absolutely love. But when you take that thing that you love and turn it into a business concept, people quickly start to fall out of love with it. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Is that like, is that because we know that's the case in a lot of cases, because the thing that I love to do painting, it became a job, right? So should we do businesses that aren't closely relied, uh, related to the, our hobby, the thing that we love so that we can keep that sacred? Yeah, I'm. my hobbies aren't things that I make money from necessarily. Yeah, I, mm, um, oh, you're good. I, I'm passionate. I'm not passionate necessarily about business. I do, under, I guess maybe I am in a certain way, but it's different than like hobbies. Like I love to like lay around and read books by a beach. That's mm. a hobby. But I'm not going to make money from that hobby. Right. Business is something that I'm passionate about in a different way because I think it's part of my purpose. And so then it's like, okay, I'm passionate about it in that way, but it's not like the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. How'd you identify it as a purpose? Okay. Well, God told me to do it. And I, I don't mean like a voice in my head, but I think purpose is something you figure out with God because purpose is the reason you were created. And so you can't really figure out your purpose without talking to him. And so that connection is what even gave me the courage to like leave the job, move, start a business, sell this thing. And so, yeah, 
It wasn't, it was, I don't feel like it was completely my idea. If it was just my idea and I didn't have God's like, go ahead on it. I don't think I ever would have done it because I'm not the world's most confident person naturally. So it takes something else. Would you be able to identify, would you be able to give someone any tips on how to find purpose if they don't have that relationship with God? Like, so people will mm -hmm. say, well, God told me, right? And yeah. there's some people that listen to that like, well, I don't think God has ever told me anything. Yeah. So I don't have that, I don't have that connection, let's say. What advice would you give for that person? That person was me when I was like 27 or 28, mm. even though I grew up in church. I didn't have a relationship with God. Like if I wanted something or felt like I needed something, I'd call my mom and be like, Mom, I know you got Jesus on the main line. Like hit him up. Oh, this you is call my your problem. mom yes, to, pray to for reach me. out to Jesus yeah. on three ways. On my behalf. Like, call yes. Your, call, call your miss. <laughs> <laughs> call this your is what I need. Quick. Get a good word. The group chat. <laughs> um, the group chat as this well. is. <laughs> okay. But, you, but in, from your perspective, you're like, okay, this person has a better connection, mm -hmm. but you felt I couldn't go directly. No, that's how I felt. It wasn't true, but it's how I felt, yeah. so I wouldn't do it. I was like, no, I'm not. Because I had an association with being able to connect with God with you, all of the things you don't do mm -hmm. if you want God to listen to you. Yeah. So, And I was like, I, I still go out, and I'm still doing You know what I mean? I was like still living, so I was like, Mom, hit him up. This is what's going <laughs> on. <laughs> but I, I came to realize that God is not just, he already paid it all. So he already knew all the stuff that I was up to was going to be up to. He already saw the full picture. Mm -hmm. And so already forgiven, not as a, a free pass to do whatever I wanted forever, but I think the realization of how much he loved me to send his son for me even knowing all of the stuff that I was going to do, have yet to do all of the things. It's like, okay, I'm already forgiven. And that started the journey of like, okay, I need to have my own relationship. I can't just be mooching off my mom's or like the pastors or my favorite YouTube pastor. I need my own. But and before so, you had that realization, mm -hmm. like, so, so, well, essentially, are you saying unless you get that relationship, you cannot find purpose? I don't believe so because I feel God created us. He created us all for a reason. If you want to know the reason, I can't ask you. I can't ask my mom or my dad. I need to talk to the person, the the creator who created me. And then it's like, all right, cool. And it's a it's a relationship just like me and you would build a relationship or me and my husband built a relationship. It's conversations. It's getting to know him through reading the Bible or and praying it's like talking to him and then the relationship develops and things really do happen I think that's what I was most surprised by I was like is this really happening to me all the time I'm asking a question it's popping up the answers popping up and all this different stuff that made me like oh this is wild let me just test this a little bit more and so yeah I don't think that purpose is something that you just I mean you can make you can come up with one but I don't know I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure somebody has an answer for that, but yeah. it's not me. Gotcha. Um, when it comes to, you're married. Yes. How's that going? It's great. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest things for any human being is to share space with another human being. So... <laughs> Not only your um, your significant other, but your child, mm. right? So you could be happy, your spouse isn't. It affects your happiness. You could be happy, your child isn't. Definitely affects your happiness. How do you navigate your own happiness when other people around you aren't, especially people that are close to you? Oh, boy. This is... I'm going to feel really spoiled. I'm married to a very happy guy mm. and my daughter is very similar. Like if anybody's going to bring the vibes down, it's more likely to be me than them. <laughs> <laughs> it, not like I do it all the time, but some, they're always great vibes. Right. I am, I'm the culprit. It's not like all the time, but it's me. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> he, he, yeah. So Please, can you turn the air on a little bit. Or um, one of yeah. Yeah. So you're just, the bad vibe. That's crazy. Make sure, make sure it's all cool. Okay, well. I know, that's so, yeah. Go home it's and not related. I feel like. A, 
You didn't just say sorry. Okay, but so if if you are happy and your child is sick, how okay, I'll ask you this question. I I always struggle with my the emotional side of me. Mm. So if my daughter is I could be having a great day. I come home, my daughter is um she has some friends that really stress her out. She's 13 years old, high school. Them friends be stress. I'm telling you, them friends stress her out. And she could be going through whatever she's going through, right? And I don't, I have a challenge ruining, hold on, we're not, we're not judging, right? No. Hey, can I get some confirmation that there's no judgment here? Because I be saying some stuff and people, I, the comments come in with <laughs> pure judgment. I have a challenge ruining my great day and risking my happiness, not risking my happiness, but not being happy anymore to be unhappy with someone. Mm. Right or wrong? There's only two answers, right or wrong. Right. I'm right? Right. Oh, but you're toxic though, so... No. <laughs> You <laughs> You're the bad yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah, time out, right. time out, though. Not for your daughter. <laughs> not for your daughter. Yeah, but but not not intentionally. But I know it's mad silly. Right. You know what I mean, I know yeah. like you you'll get over this, right? But in the moment, it's really heavy on her, and I should somehow be able to get down in the mud with my daughter to try to feel how she feels. No. I think sometimes we just want to be listened to. So you can still like listen without like, I don't, I don't think I ever want, no, that's not true. I was going to say, I don't think I want people to get in the mud with me. Sometimes it's like, oh, you see how horrible this is? <laughs> Everything is so bad. But I think that you are, you're David Chance. You have the ability to like create separation between like, I feel like you can maintain the fact that this is silly, but also be like empathetic at the same time. Yeah. So here's the thing. I am very, um, I have a high level of empathy, meaning I can feel when someone's not feeling it. Mm. I can, I can, like, I can, I can physically feel when something's going on. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, I have, I have a high level of empathy. Even on like my charts when I, I studied, it was like super high mm. because I can tell, like, Kay could come in here and something's up and she's trying to smile. And I'm like, what's up, Kay? You good? Right. And I, I, can just, I can feel something, right? But I can't necessarily express it well. Mm. But I can't, my daughter, because the weight of the world is on her shoulders in the moment. It doesn't help her to say, oh, you'll be fine. Right. Everything's cool. Sometimes it needs to be, yo, I feel that. I don't know how to share it. Mm. Yeah. Can, can yes. I interject yeah, real please. quick? You are very good with storytelling. And I think that one way that you could possibly, that could possibly help you get to that level with her is take some stories that you may have had experiences like that when you were younger and share it with her. Hey, I remember when I was going through something similar. So that way it makes it relatable for her. Yeah. Um, but also, even though it may feel hard for you to get to that emotional level, at least you are humanizing yourself in the eyes of, of your daughter. Because I know for me, like my dad, he has zero emotions pretty much. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard for me to go to him when I'm going through things. Um, and because sometimes, especially when I was younger, I couldn't see, I, I couldn't picture my dad dealing with the things that I dealt with because he didn't show that connection or that relatability. So just doing something like that could help that connection between you and her. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I take the time, right? I take the time to try to fix it. Like I do tell stories, right? I'm trying to relate, but it's still a difference between the things that I'm saying and me being able to express the emotion because uh, when I went through it, I've always been this way. It's not like when I was going through it as a kid, it really broke my heart. My my heart doesn't break 
that easy, right? So I can, I, I'm always going to be able to illustrate and paint a picture on how this situation isn't going to be that bad. But on the flip side, I see my wife really like get there and have the heart to hearts and, and then she'll come out the room from Corey and she's in, she's still in it. Right. Because I can tell that my wife can feel the way she's feeling. You know what I mean? She's, it transferred mm. no matter how happy Dre was that joy, that will stick with her because her baby is going through something. Right. You know what I mean? So I, and, and I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily a good or bad thing, but my happiness I take as personal and it's very hard for someone to ruin my happiness, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand if, if that is something that I should pride myself on, well, not pride myself on, but. Do you think that you would be able to help her better if you felt work, like as bad, as bad as she was feeling in the moment? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I would say one thing that we just, because we had premarital counseling on Monday. And we actually talked about parenting and how each parent has their role for a child. Mm -hmm. And so it's very much the same with us where when Anaya is feeling something and she's, she, whether, whatever the case may be, I'm able to emotionally get on her level and, and, um, communicate the feelings that she's feeling. And so, and some, that may just not be your place Mm -hmm. for her. It may be, yes, you can relate to her, but the emotional, the nurturing, that might be Dre's, that's Dre's place for her. So you don't, and she was telling us, like, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't take it to heart. Every parent has a specific role in each child's life, and the child knows what parent to go to for what. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. They all play different roles. So I think even like my two-year-old, Sarah, she'll be three in a couple of days, but my two-year-old, um, she can go to, she'll probably grow up going to my wife for the emotional stuff. And I'm not, I'm trying to teach this two-year-old how to be a strong black woman. <laughs> you got to teach my little two-year-old to be a strong black woman, hey. I want to cry. She be crying for no reason though. Like, but I'm like, hey, stop want to crying. Be a strong black woman. Okay. All right. What oh, let's let's throw it in the uh on the um page. I want I want to see you all call in if you guys will be willing to call in. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Didi, what makes you happy? What are like some things? Like if you had like a list of, and I don't know if you've done this before. I know mm. I have. I've created a little list of things that make me happy. And if I'm not happy, I can revert to my list and go and, th- and run to those things. Yeah. And then, whoo, I'm happy again. Yeah. And that is, that is really like a life hack for a lot of people. But like, if you can give me a list of things that make you happy, it might be big, might be small, but for sure make you happy. For sure makes me happy. Alone time makes me happy. Um, Time with my husband alone makes me happy. So alone time, then time alone with your husband makes Mm -hmm. you happy. Two different alone times. Then time with my husband and my daughter makes me happy if we're like going to do something. Reading a book and looking at the ocean makes me really happy. What kind of books? All kinds of books. So I like personal development books, political books, novels. What makes you so happy about reading books? Oh, take me away. I want Mm. to leave this this plane (laughs) get me out of here fast (laughs) i don't want to be here anymore i want to not even hear the things that are going on around me because i'm in this book Mm. yeah so it takes you to another space Mm -hmm. there's some and then looking at the ocean i just love it it's so expansive it is so deep it is just like i just love everything about it and i love the way it looks it's calming it's there's nothing better i was I was at, uh, I think I was at, you know, we were at Donnie's birthday dinner and one of her friends, I don't know how we got on the subject, but I, oh, I was talking about how I just don't like traveling. It's not my thing. Mm. I, 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 I could never get on a plane again and I would be cool. Well, she started describing how like she go to a different country and like she says, 
I always make sure I go to a waterfall. You can see the waterfall, sometimes a rainbow and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, yo, I want you to just go look at it. And I'm like, I don't like that stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what am I looking at? I don't get it. She's like, yo, it's a, it's a feeling like a calming, uh, it's almost spiritual. I'm like, I'm just looking at a waterfall. You could look at a picture. Bro, and, and I, if I was there, I'd be, I'd be so worried about like falling off of a cliff or something. Or like, man, my mind automatically goes to, I, I would hate to like be in, get to the mm. bottom of that thing. Oh my gosh, horrible. Yeah. And then I actually saw her yesterday. We had an event. Um, well, not we, but Circle of CEOs had an event in Atlanta, and I saw her, and she's like, "David, look." So it has to be about six o'clock, six thirty. The sun is falling. It's a beautiful scene in Atlanta. I'm telling you, it's like a rooftop. You can kind of see the, skin, the city skyline. And she, she, um, it reminds me of like Titanic when Jack and the girls on the front. And he's like, just look. And I'm just, I'm just, she's like, but look at the scenery. Look how the sun's falling. And I'm like, what am I looking at? Like, I was like, it's, it's cool, I guess. But anyway, that's a really good illustration of you have things and you've identified what makes you happy. And social media and the world that we live in will convince us that if you do this thing that makes me happy, right. it will make you happy. Mm. Right? Yeah. And it'll have everybody keeping up with the Joneses. Like that, if that was my perspective, I'd feel like I needed to travel a lot. I need to go to Dubai. I need to skydive. A whole bunch of stuff that would not make me happy. Yeah. Just trying to like, this is what you do. Yeah. It's like, it's not what I do. It's not what I like. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can totally relate. I, I think that that's awesome, though. All the different things. Cause, and then when you find friends who have things in common with you, it's really just like... That's amazing. It's rare, That's I right. think, but it's it's really cool. What makes you happy? What's your list on your list? Oh man, um, what makes me happy? And it's it's, it's it sounds kind of crazy because I love being around people, mm. but like I I need my me time. I be wanting to be by myself. Um, so being around people, but also. Being by myself makes me happy, depending on the situation, right? right? If I've been a, if I've been around too many people for too long, I need to be by myself. If I've been by myself for too long and I haven't had that human interaction, mm. I need to get around some people. Playing Monopoly makes me really happy. Playing basketball makes me happy. Mm. I haven't played in a few weeks. Mo Monopoly or basketball? No, I haven't played Monopoly because I'm I'm on a on a Monopoly like fast a little bit because we oh. play all throughout the week on our phone. It's like an app. Oh, but it it takes up so much time, and this has been like literally one of the most productive weeks I've had. <laughs> so I stopped playing Monopoly. Um, we have a caller. Let's 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 bring her in. Let's all go. right, Joya Bean, we are Joya bringing you Bean. on. What's happening? This is the first time she's been up on live. Maybe is it? It is. Okay, I was turning that speaker down a little bit. What's up, Joya B? Nothing much. Um, now let's fix her screen. All right, so so talk to us. What's going on? Um, about the conversation about what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna chime in on that. <laughs> and what makes you happy? Come over to the screen. Okay. Come over a little bit because you out the screen. There you go. There you go. There you go. Perfect. I'm doing yeah, hair. I'm sorry. All right. What makes you happy? Um, braiding hair, uh, teaching, reading. Braiding books. hair makes you happy. Yes, it's like a, it's like my getaway from being away from the kids. Like I'm in my my peace. Like I'm in my area. I'm braiding hair. My clients doing their thing, so I can just focus on what I want to do. And this is braiding hair. Good. Okay. What makes you unhappy? People irritate me. <laughs> people irritate you. Yes. Is the issue that people irritate you or you can't handle what people are saying? Maybe I can't handle what people are saying sometimes. But sometimes like they just be asking too many questions and it's like I don't know. <laughs> I'll be feeling like how Donnie be feeling, like don't be asking me no stupid questions. <laughs> what do you think? 
about people being irritating. Yeah. I certainly think people can be irritating, but I think that's just a matter of the people that you're around. And let's ask this question. Are the, is it the same people that are irritating or you're saying human beings in general? Um, probably human beings in general. I don't know. I be to myself a lot. So, like, if you just come around me and you just nagging me at this point, it's it's a little irritating. You and then I like okay? to myself. So. You think that's okay to I be that way? Okay. Um, for my peace, yeah. Are you hiding from something? Have you had some experiences no. that, like, led you to be this way? Because the fact that all human beings... Um, all human beings make you unhappy or irritate you. I'm not saying they make me unhappy. I'm just saying, like, they can be irritating at times. Not that they make me unhappy. It's just a lot of stuff irritates me, and I don't know. <laughs> I just be ready to, like, you know, just shut down. Like, all right, this, this enough. Something's going on here, Didi. Yeah, there's a generalization about people being irritating that I that one I can't relate to. Some people being irritating, of course, but I think that if everybody is irritating, then there might be a mood of irritation that causes like sometimes I get in a mood and it's just like nobody did anything, but the way that person was breathing, I'm irritated. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it has nothing to do with them. It has to do with, like, the day I had, the traffic or whatever on the way. All of those kind of things, I think, can contribute to, like, how you're sh – you know, it's – I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and now the fact that you're chewing with your mouth open is bothering me because why would you do that? Or the fact that it's COVID season and you sneeze directly into your hand instead of your elbow and you're old enough to know better. It's just like – but that depends on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Julia Bean, are you are you okay being the way you are? I feel like I am. I mean, yes no, the people or... that's around me, they get me. Like they understand. Sometimes I don't want to be bothered. I got my uh, time. Take... I'm yeah, in no, the mood. Yeah, that was my husband. I'm sorry. Me. Say it again. <laughs> I said. Um, the people that's can you around say that again, me, Julia? can you hear me? He, oh, she's breaking up. Are you breaking up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Say say something real quick. Something. Okay. <laughs> Are you good? Um, um no, I, I do think there's like there's more to the story. Uh, because I said, what makes you unhappy? And the first thing you said was that people irritate you. And one, I don't know if you can ever get away from, like completely away from all people. And I don't know if always getting away from people would be the healthiest thing. It's just, I'm concerned that your first answer is people make me unhappy. Are there specific people that you're thinking of when you give me that answer? Or just all people, but your answer is like, yo, it's just all people, and that that that's an indication that some something's happening um, deeper than what you're telling me. Uh -huh. We're not gonna have a counseling session. <laughs> we might. We may. If you're ready for a conversation like that. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, no. well, that's cool. Look, I, I, and I'm, I'm not going to press you. Um, so thank you for joining. And I don't want you to be on because my the way I'm, I'm wired, I'll You're keep asking questions. <laughs> and it'll make you uncomfortable. But thank you so much, Joya Bean. I appreciate you actually joining this call. This was really, really good. Thank you. All right, cool. Um. It's interesting, man. People's emotions and how they feel. It's just it's just interesting, like, where these feelings come from. I was talking to Donnie, the, uh, who was on the podcast, and I was saying that people being late really, really bother me mm -hmm. real bad. But 
I had to start to look at myself and say, well, is it that people don't respect my time? Because that's what I'm, I'm leaning on. If you're 15 minutes late and you're not even going to say, you're not going to. Right. Or you're not going to let me know 20 minutes early that you'll be 15 minutes late. Right. You can't call me when you're late and say, I'll be 15 minutes. It bothers me because I think, okay, you don't respect my time. Mm. But the question I had to ask myself is, is it that bad? And two, why does this affect me the way it affects me? Mm. So I'm going internal. Why, right. is, why is this making me unhappy? And it, I realized that I'm pushing or projecting my thoughts about timeliness on other people, thinking everyone should be like me. And I said, that's unfair. Mm. So... To what degree are people supposed to, and you're now that you've like reframed it, wh to what degree are they supposed to be respectful of your time or give you that sort of, um, hey, I'm going to be 15 minutes late, 20 minutes early? I don't think anyone owes me anything. Mm. So Not even if they agree. Not even if they agree because most humans mm. will agree to something and not keep it up. Yeah. Just what it is. You go before a a uh, a you know before your friends and family and before God and say until death do us part. Studies show fifty five percent didn't mean that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, people are people are with you until it severely inconveniences them. So I'm I'm saying I don't want to give anybody that type of power over me if you say you're going right. to do something and you don't do it i'm conditioning myself to not be affected by you not doing what you said you're going to do i just won't give you a chance to do it again got it okay yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. i didn't know if that just meant you're just gonna people could be late all the time and you're like okay no yes it's, yeah. it's, it's not no absolutely not yeah. okay that's you what i was be, that's why i was just like how did you how yeah. did you do that because i'm bothered by lateness also but I just won't give you another chance to do it unless if it's a, the only other person would be like my wife, right? Right. She's, you know, she has, <laughs> I love me some Dre. Shouts out to Andrea Shans. Um, but by the same token, I decided to love this woman exactly how she is, mm. right? And I would get frustrated when we're supposed to leave at 7 and she starts her makeup at 6.55. And I know, I know how long this stuff takes. But I decided, like, when those things happen and I get frustrated, I'm choosing happiness, meaning I can either sit here and be upset or... I can occupy my time with something else and just start to plan for us being late to wherever we're going to go. Yeah. So this is, this has been a personal development journey for me. So right. it's almost like the more someone is late, the more I get to work on myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like taking things from figuring out how, what you can do about it. Extreme ownership. Extreme ownership. ownership. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. This happened. What am I going to do about it? How can I, make a difference and then you keep getting better i i love that perspective absolutely yeah business mm. let's go to business because you coach a lot of people yeah and it ain't cheap <laughs> it's really good though what have you noticed about people who are willing to invest higher tickets in themselves versus people that don't invest at all don't invest in all at, at all. all yeah just just the, the people that's like oh my gosh i'm not gonna buy this $200 course, mm. they're definitely not going to buy a $30,000 coaching mentorship program, right? But yeah. there's a certain type of people who invest higher tickets in themselves for business purposes, education. What have you no noticed about those people as it relates to happiness and who they are? I think that we were talking earlier about contentment. Mm -hmm. I think that people who don't invest in themselves at all have settled. 
And mm. I think that's different than being content because like you're capable of more. You might even be called to more, but you've settled over here because maybe it's easier. Or the reason people don't invest in themselves is because they don't feel like they're worth the investment. They, th mm. they, they put it out on the thing and say that's not worth it, but really they just don't believe, I, I think they don't believe they can do anything with it. Like that's not going to work for me for whatever reasons they beliefs they have about themselves or, but they, they'll probably project it out onto the product. Oh, that won't work for me or that doesn't work or he's just a scammer, mm. but it's more about, they don't think that they can do it. They can't, I can't be like David Shands. I can't make a podcast. I'm not good flowing in the moment, but so they, but they're not doing that. They're like, pot, everybody thinks they can have a podcast. And so that's people who don't invest, people who do invest in themselves realize what I think is one of the most important things you can realize, which is like, you're the X factor. If it's going to be done, it's going to be done by me. If it's you're up to be, X factor. that's, and that's the difference. I'm worth it. I'm the only person who is going to make this dream come true for me. It's my dream. Nobody's going to like give it to me. So mm. I think that that's what they realize. And that's when you're ready to invest. When I first invested in myself, I think it was like, I bought a $500 thing and it was like a big deal mm. because when you have a job, $500 is a big deal. Yeah. It's like, I'm only making this much, like, you know, it's a set amount that's coming in and $500 is just not to groceries, not to nothing, not the electricity, just <laughs> out the window and like on a wish and a prayer. And then I was like, I'm going to make this $500 back. And I did. And then the biggest one I invested in, I think the next, cause then I kind of got addicted cause yeah. I did that and then I sold something and I used what I'd learned in that and it worked. And I was like, okay, cool. I made 2000 bucks, very happy. Um, I was like, I'm doing that again. <laughs> so then I invested in another program and I just started this journey and then it, it grew and it grew and it grew to the point where I was like $20,000. Okay, well, I'll probably make at least $20,000 back. Yeah. And so it's just a journey, but people see themselves as worth it. And the more that you go into that path and prove that you're the X factor and you can do anything, it starts to like reframe your brain and how you see yourself. So all of the people in that room see themselves at a very high level. They really do believe that they can do amazing things and then they go out and do them. I guess they're happy and they're happy with who they are. Yes. With the excitement to do better, yeah. to improve. And they're content, but there's, they're still driven because they know that they can do more. It's like this expanded version of yourself. And it's just like, this just keeps going. Like I just keep, it's, it's the same way that like when you get older, I'm sure now getting older is just like exciting. Cause you're like, I'm so much better now than I was whenever I was 25. For sure. And so it just gets exciting. And it's the same thing when you start investing in yourself, it just makes you happy every time you do it. A little nerve wracking, a little mm -hmm. bit on the edge, but still like. This is going to be great. And and how do we handle the dynamic of remaining happy and hopeful when things specifically in business aren't working out how we thought they should? When things aren't working out the way that you thought they should, I think there's a lesson to be learned. And so if you find the lesson and you can take that with you, I think that fundamentally believe God works all things together for my good. Yeah. So... If I believe that, then I can be okay in a moment where things aren't looking right. I don't know how, but I know he's God. Yeah, He can work this together for my good. So even in bad moments, it's like, well, if not this, then something better. And I'll try to learn from whatever isn't going right to make sure that it doesn't happen again at a higher scale or at a worse time. So I don't want to miss my lessons and have to like go through the whole thing again. So that's what I try to do when things aren't going right. It's like, there's something to be learned here. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. Uh, join in on the conversation. Uh, Nella has pinned, or oh, it's not still pinned. Okay. Um, uh, Nella's throwing the link in the chat. You can literally click it and join us in this conversation live. I think this is a very, very important conversation. Um, we want to be happy, of course. Or do we? Do you think, do you think that people are happy being unhappy? Yes. Yeah. I Let's think people have a, a baseline of discontent or dissatisfaction. If you've, have you ever noticed that there are some people, it's like no matter what, there's, they're always down. For sure. They're always down. And I think that even if the best thing in the world happened to them, 
because they have trained their brain and their body that this is how we feel and your subconscious mind loves a shortcut, Mm. no matter what, it's going to look for a way to get back on that highway. It's like, this is how we feel. This is how we do things. So no matter how good things are, they're so used to being down that no matter what happens, no matter how good things are, great things are, their body is so used to it that it starts going that there. And if you're feeling bad, you're going to start looking for reasons to support the reasons why. Mm. Goodness gracious. Nella, you have something to share? I was going to say, that's how I was in my nine to five. Like I got to a point and sometimes the, the, this is how we're going to feel is based off of the environment that you're mm. in. And so like when I was working in my nine to five, I, I'm not even there yet. And my whole energy is completely, I, today's going to be horrible. I don't feel like talking to these people on this phone. Oh my God, I got to see this person. She'd be talking my head off when I'm just trying to get my work done. Yeah. Like it's always something. And the moment I got out of that, it was like a whole different person. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have things to complain about anymore. I didn't have the down look on life and everything else because I wasn't consumed with the environment of my job. Mm, goodness gracious. Yeah. We have uh, somebody calling in right now. Are you happy being unhappy? Golly, what a conversation. Mm-hmm. What's up, Brandy? Hi. Am I, am I on here for real? Yes, you here for real. <laughs> Here? You are David. live on there. Yeah. Just zoom in. Hi, David. Hey. Hi, guys. So, I'm driving. I'm a truck driver, but I did want to chime in. Um, could you kind of, what's the question? The question is, what what makes you happy? Or? Yes. Well, there's a couple questions, but yes. Uh, one would be, what makes you happy? Um, and anything around this conversation is on your heart. Okay, so what makes me happy is a nice cup of tea or coffee in the morning for me to get my day going. Um, All the way but no. what's on my heart in regards to happiness is I feel like I'm afraid of pretty much pursuing like my dreams because I feel like if other people see that I'm happy, they will find that they will try to find a way to like snatch snatch it away from me. You know what I mean? So it's like like I don't post on social media. You know, my like I keep my life very very private. But I don't. I mean, and in reality. You know, I want to be able to, like, post moments that I spend with my kids, you know, going out traveling or what it is that I'm working on. But I feel like I can't do that because I have so many eyes on me. And I just, I don't know. What, and what, do, you, what do you call it? Is it, so you're afraid that if you post moments of you being happy, what's going to happen? I feel like, I don't know, like, in any given moment, it'll just, whatever it is, like, it could be taken away from me, whatever it is. Like, I have this this thing where I feel like, um, I don't know, it could stem from, like, early childhood issues, you know, like, just losing my mom at a young age and just, you know, um, feeling like nothing lasts forever, you know, it's going to be gone eventually, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. So it's fleeting. Happiness is fleeting. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. Does that make sense? It is. I think that I think that might have been in the definition that you read. Mm-hmm. That it was a moment mm-hmm. of joy. Being in a state. A yep. state of joy. And I think if wanting to share that, even if it, it does go away, at least it's a way for you to go back and remember that there have been these moments. Um that there is something to share, that there have been, it's always good to remind yourself of the good times. It's so easy to forget how good things have been. And the reason that it's so easy to focus on all of the bad things is because we forget. I remember 
a Tony Robbins concert, or not concert, a Tony Robbins event. And he asked, what are th three things that you have to be grateful for? And I was so sad at the end of it because I literally could only come up with one. Mm. And I was like, this is so sad. Like, I only could think of one thing. But it was only because I wasn't practiced. I hadn't practiced mm. focusing, like, looking for all the things that I had to be grateful for. And I think if you look for all of these moments where there's happiness you'll start to see more. In the same way that like when you buy a new car and you start seeing it everywhere, if you start looking for little moments and times that things to be happy about, they'll start popping up more often. Your brain will start to learn, oh, this is what we do. We look for moments to be happy. And it's literally rewiring your brain. I used to be so negative until I yeah. practiced replacing a thought with a thought, taking every thought captive, if you will. And I was like, okay, so this is the negative thought, but what, is, what does God say about this? And then I would replace, replace, replace until my brain was like, okay, there's no use even being like that anymore because she's just going to keep replacing it with a different thought. So just looking for those happy moments, I think, and sharing them because I'm sure when you're on social media and you see people sharing the good parts of their day, that probably makes you happy. Yeah. And so yeah. you could share that happiness okay. with somebody else. Okay. Thank you. And I, I think, I, no, I, you know, she's absolutely right. <clears throat> You're right, too. Happiness is fleeting, but so is sadness. Like, you know, I mean, ideally, no one stays happy. No one stays sad forever. Nobody stays happy forever. 24 hours, seven days a week, 365, but no one stays sad forever or the same level of sad forever, right? But I think yeah. we do have the power to extend those feelings as much as possible. So I want to be, ha I want these like these little pockets of happiness as often as possible for as long as I can stretch them out. Right. So me and my wife will go out. Our um, uh, in-laws will take care of the kids. And when we get in the car, we are happy and we go eat and we are happy. But well, we can extend that happiness by going to another spot after dinner. If we got to rush home, then it's only a little window of time that we got, right? But we have the power to extend it as long as possible. On the other side, the feelings of despair, the feelings of not feeling enough, you also can extend those. You can have those as just longer periods of time where you feel like this because you've decided not to cut those short and inject some happiness. And I think that's a practice. So you're 100% you're right. Happiness doesn't last forever. But that's no reason to go, that's no reason to not go get these windows of happiness for your life. And those things start to compound. We can see them through pictures. Like if you flip through a picture album, you can see these moments, oh, this is when this happened, this is when that happened, this is when that In these snapshots, we can see really happy moments. And if you, we don't do it anymore because nobody does like physical pictures. But like, I remember going through them and flipping through. It was like, yo, these, look at all these little moments over your life that you shared. And even in the time of flipping through these books, I can see my mom and my aunt and my grandma lighting up and they get to relive those happy moments again so we can't run from it just because it doesn't last forever because you get to enjoy them and then we can enjoy the memories so let's go after being happy what i want you to do today is i want you to make this list of things that make you happy Dee, Dee said it she was like yo i left that event sad because i couldn't even think of more than one thing that I'm grateful for. That's not a good way to be. So we have to be intentional about gratefulness, intentional about happiness. And I think what's even more important is identifying the things that make us unhappy because now we can start to run from those things. I, listen, there are some people on my list that, I, that made me unhappy. But before I put them on my list, I just kept letting them make me unhappy. So... Drinking for me was an issue. I was never like a drunk, but I would drink and the next day I would have a headache and then I don't feel better until like six o'clock the next day, 6 p.m. 
And I started to really think about it and analyze it and say, drinking doesn't make me happy the next day. That's on my list. Ever since I had that realization, I've never drank again, and I've been happy every morning. After a, after a night out, I wake up, cool, not hungover. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I'm thinking, my thoughts right now are would be for me to definitely cultivate a list of things that, you know, that do make me happy because I'm pretty sure that there's more, definitely. But I, I don't know. I feel like I need to put an emphasis on making a list of the things that don't make me happy and actually taking action and execute on pretty much eliminating those things from my life. For sure. Mm. Absolutely. Got um, it. Got yeah, it. one of my favorite quotes related to that is if once you become aware, that's like step one. And then if you don't change yeah. it, you chose it. So it's like mm. becoming aware Wait, is so <laughs> I said, if you don't change it, you chose it. And so it's just becoming yeah. aware of the things that don't make you happy. And then th what are you going to do about it? Because you again, like you really are the X factor. You're the only person who can do something about the stuff that doesn't make you happy. And then realizing things that we think, like, oh, I just need to get this off my chest. And you call and you tell person one, and then you call and tell person two. And then you just feel even more mad yeah. after you've told three people. And now we're all mad together. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like spreading, it's spreading all of the unhappiness. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Good. Was this helpful, Brady? Say it again. Was this helpful? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. Thank you for your transparency thank you and so thank you for joining. Much. For sure. Good. See you guys. See you later. Later. It's good, right? Oh, yeah. It's good. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's bring her, bring her in. What up, man? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man. Thank you, you so much, David. Um, My wife loves this podcast. I do, too. Um, And the question is, what makes you happy, right? Yeah. <sighs> Honestly, I would say what oh, truly makes me happy uh, is uh, no, getting no. back to playing. Yes, Can yes, you yes. He's good enough. Good? Okay. Zoom in. Um, Hold on. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Then slide him over. Slide over this way? Over more. Oh, you're saying he couldn't go over more? Oh, move to the right. Move to the right. To the right. To the right. There you go. All right, you can zoom out. Now. <laughs> and bring him up a little bit. Okay, sorry, we're, we're gonna we're gonna figure out this whole little uh, positioning thing, but all right, well, go ahead, sir. No problem, no problem. Thank you so much, King. Um, what truly makes me happy is um, spending more time with God, um, eating chocolate, <laughs> and playing video games. Honestly, because running a business, you spend so much time, you know, helping other people and getting things done. But if you don't take care of yourself, and that's one of the things I've learned after like going to the ER multiple times, like, three times, just overworking. Especially since like making manga is the thing that I do, the self-publishing, it takes a lot out of me. So spending intentional time to take care of myself, because one of my favorite creators just recently died, Akira Toriyama. So like life is short. So just making time to take care of myself as well as take care of my dreams. Mm. Is there anything that's um, toxic that makes you happy? Is there anything that makes you happy that hurts you? Yes making books. I'm a self-publisher. And what I do is manga. And one of the challenges at manga is it's supposed to be on a weekly basis. But when you do it independently, it's even harder because it's the time, the money, and it takes so much out of you that many manga can end up sick. They die. They die prematurely. They get back pain. So my goal is to follow my dreams without doing the same thing that other people do and end up with the same health concerns. I, I'm trying to understand. So my question was, is there anything that makes you happy that hurts you? And he said, making the books make you happy, but is it, it's the time schedule in which you have to deliver it? That's the issue? It's the time schedule and the amount of work because there's a lot of research involved. There's a lot of drawing. There's the marketing aspect because, again, if even if you made the, the greatest book, if no one knows you, likes or trusts you, it doesn't matter. So balancing out all of that. And I read your book about um, starting a podcast, which is awesome. So I have a podcast I'm working on that, but making sure I 
implement what we what you talk about in the podcast in your episodes and just <sighs> spending time to actually do what I said I'm going to do. Um does the happy outweigh the hurt at the end of the day? Like because we, we get happy because it's completed, right? Mm. But the journey to get there is depleting. Mm. So but if, if you had to look at it objectively, does the happy outweigh the hurt or the hurt outweigh the happy where you're going through it all the time and you realize, you're, I'm never going to do this again, but you find yourself doing it again. So what do you think in that balance? I would say the happy definitely outweighs the hurt because I've seen a lot of people go through the process of making their own books, but they never finish it. And the blessing is that I've actually gotten books done. Like I've done 14 in like six years. So and I've seen people's lives change. Like people are like, this book gives me hope. And, you know, this is something that's really inspiring. Like my kids love it. So seeing people's lives change because I actually finished a book is more valuable to me than all the challenges. Because, you know, pressure makes diamonds. So I'm not exactly hurt about the pain. I just have to make sure that the pain is not overly too much. That's all. And here's the, here's the, the, the last question to this. Have you thought through a way to limit the hurt on this on this journey to happy right it might be um something that can be done because sometimes we like putting ourselves through something when there's a better way to do it it's taking a lot of my time but is there a way that i can still get this end result with um kind of curbing the pain yeah there is a way to limit the pain. One of the options is actually hiring more people on my team because right now it's God, my wife, and me. It's like three people. Mm -hmm. generally, I like that. <laughs> it's, it's generally more people on a team that makes manga and just books in general. So hiring more people and then having the money to hire more people. So having high ticket offers, having continuity offers, having different systems like with you, Neo, Donnie, everyone talks about to make the business more sustainable. So that it's not just a promotion, but it's actually a business. So I'm working towards implementing that and learning to drive and just using that to help take the business to the next level. Because I don't want to just hear the problem, see the problem, and then, you know, have insanity, think it's going to change by doing the same thing over and over. Now it's about what to implement to change. So as you said, to reduce the pain. I like it, dude. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you know what to do. You've got, you know, you, you see the problem, you know what you need to do. It's just a matter of figuring out what those offers are going to be and then putting a timeline to them. So it's not just like, I know that I need to have these other offers. It's like, okay, well, what are people interested in that I can help deliver to them? And then what am I going to price it at? And also how much do you need for the team? So like what, maybe it's not even like, oh, I need to hire this team. If you make the goal too big to start, maybe it's just like, I need to hire one person. And then it's, I need to hire one person for 10 hours a week. Maybe that would help out to do this one specific thing. So you can start small and gradually as it starts giving you the ability to make more and do more, then you have the ability to be like, okay, now it's going to be 20 hours. Now it's going to be 40. Now I'm going to take two people. Okay. Now I can have the ability to do three, but in the meantime, you're giving yourself some relief and it just might be a matter of like, we're not Uber eats in this week or going out to eat. I'm getting an assistant to help me do X and then building on that and letting it like allow you to be more free. That, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Good stuff. Thanks for sharing, man. We really appreciate you. Thank you, King. God bless. Have a great day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, it's so good to have these uh, conversations. It's refreshing, right? Yeah. Uh, versus kind of just going through day to day. If we can have like some inner work, on really going out. I think we're not happy sometimes because we haven't, one, decided, and two, we have no idea what it's supposed to look like because we don't take time to really evaluate happiness. And some people go and they do, like, self-care stuff, right? And it's on your schedule. It's almost like happiness is on your schedule. Right. This time throughout the week, I've decided that I've carved out some time to be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Because the world is so hectic and we put everything on our calendars. Predominantly things that don't make us happy. Put everything except for us on the schedule. That is good. Um, yeah, thank y'all for, for joining. 
Feel free to call in. We still got a pen. Now let, let's keep that joint pen. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep it pen, man, because I love hearing from you all. If there's anything that we can help with, uh, please allow us to help. Just join in, or you think you can help this conversation. But let's prioritize our happiness. I want to get into a little bit of business. Um, we we know we have a call. Okay, all right. Uh, what's up, Freddie? Well, let's bring Freddie in here, man. He's always good with these kind of conversations. Uh, what's up? What up, Freddie? What's going on? How you doing? Man, I'm good, brother. Yeah, I hate barbers like you. You just leave to do other stuff. <laughs> 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 you ever had a barber just on the phone like, yeah, bro, because it's all on my cut. I'm like, yo, bro, what's on my cut, bro? <laughs> what up, man? What's going on? Man, everything's good, brother. Everything's good. Good, good. Uh, what makes me happy is when I'm able to serve people well. Uh, seeing people get what they need, seeing that, that, that uh, expression of fulfillment on their face, you know, and actually sometimes seeing it in action. If they need a haircut for a speech they're gonna do and they shoot me a video of the speech and they're sporting the haircut and they're, you know, they're doing their thing with the elegant, eloquent speech and they get a round of applause. And like it all, it all becomes like a part of the big picture. You know, when people come to get a haircut, it's not just, just to get a cut most of the time. They got something going on. You know, first date, funeral, job interview, you know, so many different things. Or they're an entrepreneur, they just gotta continue to look good for what they do. They got a conference coming up, something like that. It's, it's always something, you know, important. Um, when I was living in Brooklyn, the owner of the barbershop told me, he said, um, the barbershop is like a funeral home. You gotta be there when the call comes. So when that call comes, it's important, right? And we have to be ready to serve. So when I have an opportunity to serve well and I see great results from that service, it makes me happy, man. Let me ask you this question. Um, what makes you unhappy? What makes me unhappy is if <clears throat> there's a miscommunication in what's needed for the service and I don't serve well because of the miscommunication, or if I don't serve well because I don't have the skill. Yeah. That makes and me outside happy. of Outside of you cutting hair, is there anybody or anything on this earth that has the power to control your level of happiness? Right now, real estate. Real estate can make you happy or unhappy. Yes, because I've assisted in selling two houses this week. So that so makes me very happy. I insisted in selling two houses this week. So that made me very happy. Good. When does it make you not happy? <sighs> well, if we get those people who they act like they want the house, and then at the last minute when we're about to sign the paperwork, they renege. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Because then you budget, you know, okay, we're going to pay this bill. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then all of a sudden they, they back out. It's like, oh, man, we're back at square one. <laughs> I feel that. And there's nobody on this earth that can make you unhappy? Not anymore, uh, because I am committed to my own happiness and I know how to keep myself happy. Um, I, I believe in God and I believe that he is the, the center of my joy. You know, God is not only, let's be specific, God is not only my spiritual father, but also spiritual mother. So I can come to God for strength, for protection, for comfort, for happiness, for peace, for joy, right? So it doesn't matter what's going on as far as this human life is concerned because none of us are perfect, right? We're all flawed. So at some point, a human being is going to, is going to frustrate you a human being is going to rub you the wrong way. A human being might even let you down, but God will never do that to us. So I can always look to God for what I need in order for me to stay happy. I love it. I love you guys. Yeah, that was so good. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where the reason that we feel like that, 
something that can cause us to be so unhappy is our expectation of other people or of things and failed expectations are what cause us to be so frustrated. But if you can learn to raise our expectations of ourselves and lower our expectations of other people and things around us and just like, regardless, I'm resourceful enough to handle this when it shows up and this change our expectation level, then that I think could be a real game changer. And we can start to appreciate things more and be fascinated instead of frustrated and all of these things. But it, again, it just takes awareness. So that was really. Yeah, absolutely. And then when it, when it also, to your point, when it comes to expectation, where there's no expectation, there's no disappointment. So if I look at a human being and I expect them to be a human being, <laughs> you know, and have ebbs and flows and positive, negative and ups and down, things of that nature, then I'll be fine. But if I expect perfection from a human being, then I'm going to be disappointed because I have an unrealistic uh, expectation. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Freddie, appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for chiming in, man. Yes, sir. Now cut Prince that Bob. guy's hair, bro. He's like, he's waiting. He just <laughs> <laughs> forgot yeah, about him. I gotta go third, man. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he's like, yo, bro, God. cut my hair, bro. What's up? <laughs> Appreciate you, fam. Appreciate you. Y'all take That's her. I'm it. Okay. Um, I saw somebody else called in, but um good. Okay, we're cool. Um, well, yeah, man, I th- I think this 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 conversation is uh was much needed and it helped me. Yeah. Me too. I've enjoyed this. This was good. Wasn't it? Yeah. Good. Did we miss anything? Anything you wanted to t- talk about or discuss? I got something. Well, yeah, you have to talk about the business stuff. But also, I want you guys to kind of touch on, because I feel like there is a very thin line between being content and settling. Mm. And I kind of wanted you guys to touch on, like, how do you know when you're not, you're just settling versus mm. I'm content with what I have? What a conversation. Yeah. Not stop settling for that man. He over here trying to start stuff. <laughs> that is a conversation. That, what do you think? I content think, versus settling. So I, I used to think it was a bad thing to be content. I heard a message, um, and I don't remember who it was by, but it was talking about a holy discontent. And sometimes you're discontent for a reason, and it's because you've been called to and created for more. So sometimes you shouldn't. Be content. You should be doing more. And I think that that discontent, if it's not based on like, oh, I went on Instagram today and I saw that so-and-so has this. So now I want that. And I'm discontent with my life because of things out here. But if I'm discontent with my life because of something from up here or something that I know I have the ability to do that I'm not doing or executing on and I just ignore it, then I'm settling. But if I'm doing the things that I feel like I'm called to in like the time that I feel like I'm called to do it, I'm not doing things. I don't like to base my decisions on like anything out here. It's it's not about any of that stuff. It's about like, what has God called me to do? What do I and even if it's it's not always God, it's sometimes what do I want to do or what do I think is a good idea? And then from there, it, I'll pray about things and I'm going to hope it's God. I'm going to believe it's God. And sometimes I'm wrong. I'll plan in pencil, but I do like to have a plan. But I do think that settling is just like, I have this feeling that I should be doing more, but I'm going to get on TikTok instead, or I'm going to ignore it and I'm going to go hang out with my friends, or I'm going to go do whatever it is to distract myself from this feeling, then you're settling. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. And, um, switch it. Please. Do I switch or? Um, you distracting got confused what was going on. Um, how do you know that it's not settling but a sign from God then? How do I know that you're from God? So um mm. Say you want, <laughs> I'm being that. Say you want to do something, right? Mm-hmm. And it's something that you want to do, but it God's telling you not to do it. 
Oh, I believe. Then I'm taking the signs. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. what would be the difference from set? How how do you know you're not settling because you're not doing it? I feel like if there if things if I have a plan to do something and uh, I get a sign, for instance, something falls through, something I was planning on doing um, doesn't work out, so and so shows some kind of red flag, and I thought that this was going to be my business partner and we were about to do this thing, for instance. But I've learned I've seen that red flag before. I'm not doing it. Like, I feel like that was God giving me an alert. This is not the move. This isn't. And sometimes he doesn't just give me one. He's like, in case this one didn't ding your dong, then <laughs> here's another one. And here's another one. And here's another one. Because I do believe in like, I, I have a plan. I think this is the way we're going to go. Or because so-and-so thinks it's the way we should go. I'm going to try it. And then I'll get like one little thing. Some the Sometimes it's just like, this is something to pay attention to. So for instance, I just stepped in, I'm doing new things and working with new people. And um, just in having a conversation, because I'm stepping into this new role, I have to in interact. And I was talking to this woman and she's telling me about her plans and something that she said was just like, it, it didn't really quite make sense to me, but I didn't really pay attention to it. Um, fast forward like 15 days later, she says something else. And I just am like, let me just ask a question question immediate red flag if you ask a question and somebody responds with a two-minute voice note of something that should be a simple like <laughs> yeah a simple answer like this should be easy for you to I feel like God just kept giving me these little this look over here look over here look over here till finally I did and so those are the signs that's not settling that's just paying attention um Settling is you have that dream, you have that goal, you've been knowing you should be doing it for a really long time and you keep ignoring it because it's uncomfortable and you're settling in your comfort zone. Not I tried it or I'm trying it and I think that this is where I'm supposed to go, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's there's definitely a difference between settling and, um, and, and, and being content. But if we're having the conflict, I think it's important. I always talk mm -hmm. about like when it comes to fear to interview the fear. Like let's have a conversation about why I'm afraid right. of this. Whatever the feeling is, I think we need to like sit down for a little bit, bit and say, okay, am I settling or am I content? Am I, am I content because I don't think I can do more? Am I feeling content because um, because I think this is all that I can I can get. Do I feel like I'm settling because other people think I'm settling? Mm. Do, like, am I chasing something that somebody else is want, somebody else wants? But I'm asking myself, did I stop this far because I'm chasing after somebody else, and now I feel like I'm settling? You couldn't be settling. You could feel content, but you feel some sort of pressure because you're chasing after something that you don't want in the first place. Right. So I think we need to figure out the things that we want. Do we want them because we want them or do we see them somewhere? Right. Like, let's just remove all of the, um, remove all of the outside factors. That's why, listen, y'all, I hate that they got rid of paper and pen because, because yeah. you could like draw a line down the paper and like, this is like the pros and this is the cons and we can see a physical list. You can't, it's hard to do that on the on the app you know what i mean like brainstorm dump so i can see okay wow that, these are the pros of this thing these are the cons these are the things that make me happy these are the things that make me sad and i can see it on one paper how i want my life to be, desi be designed what are the reasons that i want this thing what are the reasons that i want to make 10 million dollars i had to have a conversation with myself what's the reason i want to make 10 million dollars in a year one of the reasons is I feel like I can, I, I wanna bump my full potential. Mm. One of the reasons were because my friends do it. One of the reasons are I could do more for my church. Another reason is because um, my friends have big houses and I need a big house. Yeah. There's like these like little lists of reasons. And sometimes you can look at a list and all of the things, like you can see that clearly this isn't by my own design. This desire isn't my own design. Right. It's been it's been heavily influenced by other people. So we gotta have conversations with ourselves. Yeah. And some people feel because I 
I feel something, it's automatically God. And I'm telling you, it's not all the time. Sometimes it's a bias, meaning I want this to happen. I really want to do this, but I'm going to tell myself it's God. And I've convinced myself because I really want to do it. That is the right thing. Or I can, okay, God is telling me not to do it. Not that I shouldn't do it, but because I'm afraid. Like you really right. have to analyze all the things that go on in your head yeah. and start to ask yourself questions, yeah. in my opinion. Um, all right, man. This is good. This is good. Hey, listen, family. Anything you want to like end off with? I think that it's just really important to realize that you can be satisfied and content. You can be content but not satisfied. Mm. Like I'm content with where I'm at. I love my life. I wouldn't change a thing. And also, I'm not satisfied because I know I'm capable and can do more. But I still love my life. I love everywhere I look at it. It's good. So it can mm. be both. It can yeah. be both things. I was actually really happy when you know, I worked at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. I was, yeah, life is, life is good. I wasn't, I guess, Yeah. it's like, once you know something, then it's like, oh, you can be excited about it. But like, my whole world was kind of lit when I was working at the Cheesecake yeah. Factory. Yeah. For real. I was just, and, well, I would say like the second half, because I started this t-shirt business that I had high hopes for. But I didn't look at the Cheesecake Factory as a bad place to be. I'm like, whoa, I got this amazing job. I get to learn communication. And I got this side business going on. And I got some cool friends. Yeah. And my friends DJ, so I can go to the club for free. Yeah. My life was really, really good. And it, like as things progressed, I remained happy. But there are some people that are complaining about their job, complaining about where they are. They're going to make a whole bunch of money. They're going to complain about that too. Right. They're going to make e have even more people around and going to complain about that. So I think wherever we are, we need to choose to be happy now. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you've been happy the whole time. I, I, I've been pretty happy. Yeah. That's awesome. Almost like um, content though. Mm -hmm. I get that. I can relate to that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I was content. I didn't, I mean, I don't know if I ever got like sick and tired or, I don't know, once I made the decision that I was going to like win, I could have lived in that state forever of like just deciding to win, still working at the Cheesecake Factory, making money on my clothing brand. If it starts to grow, I just, I don't know. I think y'all, listen, y'all need to be happy. Don't let anybody else control it yeah. or any other circumstance control it. Yeah. It's good. Really All right, y'all. You were going to touch on the business part. We touched on happiness. I think we wrapped it up in this conversation. Though. He said we wrapped it up. I mean, because it's whether it's business, <laughs> relationship, whether it's hobbies, we, we need to, like, search for happiness. Mm -hmm. Find out what happiness is. Right. Because if you don't decide that, you'll be in business and it's not going to work. And you keep changing um, one, of, one of the things that really helped me was, uh, it was, it wasn't about the growth of the business. It was about me staying in the business for an extended period of time because I had never stayed anywhere. I never, st I never stuck to one idea long enough mm. to see it grow. So I told myself, I'm going to do this business for at least a year. And then the year came up. I said, yo, I'm going to do this business for another. So you're actively doing the business. And whether the business grew or not, it really made me happy and proud to say, yo, I've been doing the same thing for 12 months. Cause I never, I always three weeks, six months, 10 months and 10 months was like my, my cap. And I was just happy to be still doing it. It's really great. Really dope. Yeah. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, man, do yourself a favor. Uh, follow social proof podcast, follow Didi on social media, man. She don't be on there like that. Though, but she's dope. Make sure you follow her journey. And and if you enjoyed this conversation, if you enjoyed this conversation, send Dee Dee a DM of something she said that really impacted you. Okay, something sometimes a a um, a thank you feels really good. Oh, yeah. It'll be a, like a short shot of happiness for you. See, wow, what you said. I'm really going through it. I agree. I I, I can relate to you. You'll be reading yeah. it, and you'll be what. Happy. Come on, if you don't change it, you chose it. it. I'm stealing that. I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> I give you credit. Nice. Don't worry. Thanks. Hey, let's find that clip. We find that clip, Reese. We gonna find that clip. We need to. We gonna we gonna make a collaboration post because that was. I think that's gonna set a lot of people free. Yeah. That's gonna help a lot of people. So, um, do me a favor. Send a DM to Didi. Make her happy today. Put her uh, Instagram up one more time. Uh, make sure y'all go follow. Send her a message, and um, we will be right back next Friday. Every Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're trying to catch you on your lunch break so that you can go back into work feeling empowered and inspired. Not that people actually work at places anymore because everybody works from home. Oh, Podcast Summit 2024 is upon us, okay? Podcast Summit 2024. I need you to go get your tickets to Podcast Summit. If you want... I know your issue. I know the problem. You've been telling yourself you're going to start a podcast for the last three years. I know you. I know you. And you haven't. You even haven't started because of the fear of the unknown. How people are going to judge you. What equipment should I get? What should I talk about? Are people really going to even care what I have to say? I'm telling you, there's an environment that you can come to. You're going to share some space with other people that are feeling the same way. But from the stage, you are going to see examples of people who had that fear that you had, but now they're teaching you how they got over it. And they're going to teach you exactly what to get, exactly what type of uh, content you should be, uh, be creating. What are the trends in the industry? What are the AI hacks? What are the ways that you can really make some money and monetize? How can you treat it like a business? How can you protect your ideas? And outside of all of the the information you're going to learn in two days, a guarantee for you is you are going to connect with some amazing people. Everybody that's been on the Social Proof Podcast gets an invitation for a free ticket. If they've been a guest on the podcast, they get an invitation for a free ticket. But when I'm giving them the, the ticket, I'm asking them to sit down with you, the creator, and have a conversation so that you can have them on your podcast too. We will have 20, get a VIP ticket. You will have, we have 20 branded um, podcast booths where you can sit there and actually record podcast lives with any, any of the people that you see, any of the speakers. I'm asking them to do me a favor. To If you pull them and say, hey, can you sit down and give me a quick interview? I'm asking them to say yes as much as they can. You need to be there. I'm going to give you this promo code. Don't tell anybody else, okay? Use promo code Big Deal. Big Deal. B I G D E A L L. Big Deal. It's going to take 25% off of your ticket. But if you do it right now, because we had this real deep conversation today, if you do it right now, after you purchase your ticket, you are going to get an email. And we are going to allow you to bring somebody with you for free. Okay, whatever level ticket. You get VIP, it's 25% off, but you'll get to bring a business partner, a spouse, a co-host, whatever. But you have to do it right now. And we are going to give you a quick glimpse of Podcast Summit 2023 last year. So you have a little glimpse of what to expect for next year. We will see you all next week. Podcast Summit 2023, baby. We in the building. What we doing? We have Podcast Summit. That's what we're doing. This is one of those events that if you miss, you actually miss something. Everybody knows media is taking over and David Shares is leading the front. It isn't just about building a podcast and finding your message. It, it's about truly leveraging the power of podcasts to create, don't wait. Everyone here is a content creator or emerging content creator or aspiring content creator. And we have learned the tools necessary to create our own work. I think it's a lot of people that just didn't register their comment. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, we're not tripping on general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if if I, sure. I told them, hey, look, if they're not on it, we'll double check. If we got to add it. I want everyone logged yeah. so we know what the final number is. Yeah. I'm really just tripping off of, you know, the VIP mastermind. So yeah. we have certain limits for all those. Yeah. The preparation for the podcast summit was grueling. Providing this experience for creators of color, the sun, the vibes, the feel of Miami. It was all worth it. We do have a limit on all stars. There's a certain amount of people we can feed. Well, we don't have a limit anymore because we have oh, the bigger room. Bigger room, yeah. Yeah, we'll just have to pay for it. Got it. Yeah. So you technically could still sell All-Star right. All Masterminds or have people upgrade. What do we deliver to a 
broad audience of people who are in the podcasting space. I came here to learn more about branding and how to expand it into a podcast. Some people are interested in podcasts and they're coming to find out how they can finally launch this podcast that's in their head. So I'm also here to learn about how I can monetize my podcast that I'm looking to launch in September and protect my brand legally. But there's another group of people who have been podcasting, but they have no idea what they're doing. It's not growing. They're not getting more views. They're not getting more downloads. I want to learn how to monetize. I want to learn how to grow. I just want to learn how to, like, I guess, engage with the people more. I'm just a mom who just wanted to do something crazy. <laughs> But you're holding it intentionally so there's more energy outside. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, do, do your thing, man. Uh, how, how, if, if we're behind, how do we make up for it? Or we just push everything back a little bit? I think there are breaks that can, uh, that will naturally adjust. Got it. And okay. get us back on track. Yeah. What's the lobby looking like? Is it busy? Are they out there? Did they show up? So once I got out on the stage, I looked out and I saw a packed room on a Sunday. I was just energized. I was really just blown away because now I know that the people are here. We're about to feed. You see it? Y'all see, see it? Do you see it? In the back, do y'all see it? Can y'all feel it? Y'all know it? Your life is going to change in the next 12 months. Let me tell you about something I've never seen before. I've never actually seen a podcast booth set up for creatives to create in real time. So I'm talking about networking on steroids. You just met somebody in the room. You want to actually have a quick little interview or a quick little meeting. You could take them into one of the booths, ask them all the questions you really want to ask them in real time, record and document that, and actually put that content out right now. I've never seen that before. Crazy. Get where you need to get. To how that's going. Uh, Don't be on track. Camera was shaking during the podcast interview, so we got to figure something out. I think when you're looking at production of anything, you should always be looking at it from a pessimistic perspective. What can I do to improve? What can I do to make this thing better? It might be the smallest change. People aren't looking at what's wrong. You could record a whole episode and there's a trash can behind you that nobody sees because nobody's looking at what's wrong. They're only looking at, oh, this is a good shot. You know, that's the one thing you can't hide during a live event. You know what I mean? Like, Say I launch a book. You don't know how many I sold. You know what I mean? Say I launch a t-shirt brand. Hey, get the shirts. I can be like, yo, it's popping. People are buying the shirts. Almost sold out. But a live event, like, if nobody's there, everybody knows that nobody's there. One of my biggest takeaways from the podcast summit so far was like an aha moment first when Donnie said, don't edit. It was like, mind blown because I'll be doing the most with trying to edit my podcast and stuff. I actually launched my podcast yesterday and then I got to actually experience the content room and I got to film some episodes for my podcast. I have been able to network from the moment I got off my plane. Thank you guys so much for the podcast summit. This has been an amazing experience and this is just day one. Who believes they have a seven figure podcast inside of them? It sounds good. It sounds real good. Get pen and paper out, let's get to work. Me and my partner Donnie made an offer more on the entrepreneurial side where you can have us as business partners. David gets really nervous about like asking for the money. He gets excited about the product. He wants to do it all the time. Oh yeah, 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 we're gonna do this, do this, do this. But when it's time to ask for the money, he gets scared and it's all on me. Right. <laughs> it's David Chance, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, it's Rashad. One half of Earn Your Leisure. I'm at the Podcast Summit right now. My boy David Shans put it together. And, um, you know, it's very important that we have this kind of dialogue because there's no blueprint, there's no college course to actually learn how to, you know, be a superstar in a new age in media. So these type of formats, these type of programs are extremely important. Now, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to create. I've yeah, always yeah. wanted to be on that. But it's the, it's the consistency part when yep. shit ain't working, so we yep. can stuck. Yeah, yeah. So we, well, that's what, well, here go the thing. You don't know if it's not working. That's the problem. So like I said, when we was doing Thank God It's Monday, we had 50 people watching. Was it working or not? I don't, 
It was. We just didn't see the evidence till later. Okay. What's faith? The it's substance. A thing is how far and the evidence goes. So if you got faith that it's going to work, as long as you know, listen, I say this. If you can get five people to listen, you can get 10. If you can get 10, you can get 50. If you can get 50, you can get 200. You see what I'm saying? Like, if, if you got people right, and so a lot of people get caught up because they don't got the big numbers and they ain't got the huge following. Right. Keep, stay consistent with the content. So a lot of Side. But but yeah, like you said, we don't want to box her. In. I mean, if we can have them placed and then just quickly from like here, right here, after they sit, Ooh. that works. That works so good. We are yeah, um, setting up back. the just set the, for the Babis. Um, she is interviewing a surprise celebrity guest. Well, Rick Ross isn't yeah. coming anymore. He was supposed to be Trina's guest. So now we're trying to find another celebrity that's in Miami that'll come and interview. I am about to interview Trina. This was not originally a part of the program. There are some things that I'm going to ask her about stuff that I don't know about. The woes of uh, doing something good. And we were running on time the whole time. So there's one issue. I guess I don't need to talk about that too much, but I mean, it's a part of the journey. Right? If I'm being honest, man, the highlight of the conference for me was the testimonials. I mean, you, do, you put all this time and energy into an event, you're like, yo, did everybody have a good time? Was everyone pleased or are they gonna cancel me Monday morning? And the testimonials, the, the tears, the rave reviews. And it wasn't me, it was the fact that they got a, a gumbo of information that was tailored towards them. So the biggest thing I got yesterday was learning how to reach out to sponsors, getting the correct pitch deck going, and also when it comes to branding and making sure that whenever you're pushing yourself on YouTube that you have a good thumbnail and a good description. One thing that I learned that I'm going to implement immediately is one, make sure all my operations are in order, two, thinking about branding, specifically what Mario talked about of like what brands can you actually work with and what does that look like to actually get sponsorship. The podcast summit in two days transformed my life and it just opened my mind as to how far I can go with my podcast, any pivots that I may need to make or any rebranding that I need to make. So we're just going bigger. We're just going bigger. We're just going bigger.